वेलकम टू एलेक्ट्रिकल एंड कंट्रोल इंजीनियरिंग एक्स इज कंटेन्स द साइज ऑफ द सोलर द साइज ऑफ द जेसीफायर एंड द नंबर ऑफ बैटरी यूनिट्स सो दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ दिस फिटनेस फंक्शन एज अ रिटर्न एज अ रिजल्ट इट रिटर्न द लेवलाइज कॉस ऑफ एनर्जी सो हियर इन दिस लाइन नंबर सी द बायोमैक्स is the maximum size of the gasifier and here is the fuel of that gasifier this is the battery efficiency so we are loading uh, some data actually this is the load demand and ta is ambient temperature g is the solar irradiance so this data is loaded to this program so x1 here that's passed to this uh, economic analysis file by the optimization x1 is the number of solar panels that is selected by the optimization algorithm so in this few lines from here to this uh, previously we have discussed the modeling of uh, uh, solar panel so actually the second this is actually uh, these four lines are copied from that exactly from the same um, matlab modeling so here this is the final formula number of solar panels g divided by g reference in our case it's thousand to convert watts into kilowatt here here is 1 minus loss i so actually loss is kt into into t mbn minus t reference so it's exactly the same thing is uh, copied here so this is a kt this is a d rating finger mbn temperature the reference minus the reference to the temperature plus so this modeling is previously given so here the gasifier section is uh, written here so x2 is the size of the gasifier selected by the optimization algorithm p by is the energy or the power that will be uh, that's produced by the biogas fire initially we set it to zero so as the as the simulation goes on for 8 7 6 rewards so for each r energy generated by the gasifier will be stored in this variable b by Here is the fuel of the gasifier. Initially, it's also zero. So why we are setting here 8760R? Uh, 8760R because in a year there are 8760R. So here it's number of batteries. Inverter efficiency is 95% and depth of discharge means the battery can be discharged up to 80%. Similarly, uh, at line number 29, so the B max, uh, so the maximum battery capacity energy that the number of batteries multiplied by one because here we are using the battery that has a capacity one kilowatt hour. So the maximum will be number of batteries selected by the optimization algorithm into one. So the minimum will be E B max into one minus depth of discharge. Already we have discussed these equations in the modeling of the battery. so these two and this eb initially uh, we are uh, setting the battery status to zero um, uh, for all the hours 870 hours uh, these are the grid sales and purchases energy initially we are we, we are we are setting everything to zero because it's the start of the simulation uh, e discharge and e charge this is the the energy that is discharged from the battery and this is the energy that is uh, provided to the battery means this is the charging of the battery and this one is the discharging of the battery this is the initial uh, status energy status of the battery so everything is also uh, written uh, in the comment section uh, if you see the comments so initially uh, we are assuming that the battery bank is fully charged So PL is the load, and UNIV is the inverter efficiency. Uh, here it is 95%. So we are uh, so before proceeding to the operating stability of this algorithm. So let's see. Uh, so here is the. Uh, flow chart of uh, this operating stability. So 
so here you can see that this one is the uh, we are taking the input solar radiation load and power so modeling of the PV gasifier and water we have done with this so uh, then a power loop will be running uh, for 8760 hours uh, because in a year there are 8760 hours so for each hour it will be checking uh, the balance of the energy here the PPV uh, the renewable energy this is the P ran or P renewable energy minus load so we are checking if P ran means the renewable energy in our case it is the solar energy if it is greater than load demand if yes then call the charge function so actually the charge function will uh, provide will charge the battery means the extra energy after meeting the load demand this extra energy after meeting this load demand will be provided to the battery in other case uh, if REN is less than uh, P load means the solar energy alarm is not sufficient to meet the load demand then we will discharge the battery uh, and this simulation will be uh, run for 8760 hours later on we will see the charge and discharge functions separately uh, after running the eight, this simulation for 8760 hours uh, at the end of this simulation we will calculate the overall cost of the system and from that we will calculate the levelized cost of energy and this uh, economic analysis file simulation or the operating strategy will be ended and levelized cost of energy will be calculated so if we come here then okay. so this is the same on the previous we were discussing if the solar energy is greater than load demand then it will be charging otherwise uh, we will call for discharge when the renewable energy can meet the load demand then this load will be met by this renewable energy source and the extra energy will be stored in this battery storage system if still we have their extra energy then that energy will be sold to this grid utility so here uh, in the program as you can see there uh, at line number 41 uh, there is this is this is the far loop we are starting here a far loop we are seeing this if the solar energy is greater than load demand then we here we are calling the charging function the charge function in the else part if the solar energy is not able to meet the load demand then we will be calling the discharge function so after completing this uh, far loop for 8760 hours we will be calling the economic cost phi so uh, the economic cost function will give us annualized cost of energy so using this uh, if you see this one sorry so levelized cost of energy is calculated here so this is the annual cost and this is divided by uh, the energy provided to the load plus the energy that is provided to the that is provided to the grid means the energy that is sold so if we uh, divide the annualized cost of the system divided by the total energy generated by the system so it will give us the levelized cost of energy so so let's see how the charge and discharge function works so before proceeding to this charge and discharge function so let's see uh, let's so let's uh, uh, first uh, explain this charge and discharge function then we will see the uh, uh, in the in charge and discharge files 